Hello everyone, and welcome to the Do-It-Yourself Gourmet. Today, we're going to be dressing a turkey, a young turkey, for a holiday dinner. But it's good for dinner any time of the time, any time of the day that you might feel like cooking a turkey. First thing we do, now we've already got the giblets and the neck removed. And we've got a video if you need to see how to do that from a store-bought turkey. Right here, we're letting some of the extra juices drain off, and usually that's the seasoning or the extra um, liquid they put into the bird for when it gets frozen on its way to transit. We take it over here, we got the neck area nice and clean, and then we also have the body cavity so that there's nothing in there that shouldn't be. Turkey butt's still right here, and uh, we're going to let that cook on the inside. And so the first step is going to be to get the seasoning. And for the seasoning, we've got ourselves a little bit of Handmade HDP by uh, one of our good friends and partners, the Marinade Maiden. Hopefully she'll be coming out on YouTube soon. And she makes great rubs, and that's uh, got a bit of savory, a bit of sage. And uh, we'll list the rest in the description so that we can get on with it. But it's an awesome Herbs de Provence mixture. And so here we're going to get the mixture. We've got it all set up right there, so that all we mostly have to do is go ahead and spoon it in. And the next thing that we're going to do is baste it a bit in olive oil. Now, it doesn't have to be extra virgin olive oil. In fact, it probably shouldn't be, since that's a little bit too light. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the extra virgin olive oil, and the not extra virgin olive oil, and we're going to get a brush. Not necessarily a pastry brush, because that might be a little difficult to clean. We got one of these that are made out of uh, rubber and latex, and we pour it on a bit. Probably ends up being about four tablespoons. And then we can take it, move it all around. It doesn't need to be too much, but what it needs to do is coat the skin. That way, when it's in the oven, and it starts off on the high temperature, then the skin will be able to sear. And in searing, you get the effect that allows the juices to render inside of the skin so that they don't leak out of the bird while it's cooking. And then we also use a technique that employs high heat, low heat, and high heat. And in doing that, we give ourselves a chance to render a lot more of the fat inside so that when you finish, the bird itself is rather moist and juicy. And so we'll pick it up on the side after getting the top. You go ahead and take it by the wing. It's definitely going to knead it on all sides so that it doesn't stick. And now I highly recommend cooking the turkey by itself until at least the, uh, the second half of the slow cooking. Because what that will do is allow the bird to actually get proper cooked. Because sometimes when you add stuffing in and you do it, when the bird is early in, it takes a lot more to cook because people pack stuffing in real tight and that's not necessarily the best way to do it. And so if you want to pack the stuffing in, it needs to be loose and it needs to be towards the end. Now what we do here is a method that uh, the Marinade Maiden came up with where we let it sit as if it were in an almost roosting position and that gets the juices from the backbone much more into the breast, much more into the legs, and it keeps a lot of the flavor, almost all of the flavor, available inside of the bird. Next thing we're going to do is fold back the wings so that it goes underneath the backbone. So here we're coming up with the air mixture. And we're going to sprinkle that all over. And we just start tapping that around. And we'll move the bird around too, but this particular way helps to get the wings nice and stretched out that way you can really get the flavor in there and you can expect a little to fall off the side and go over and you know if you're going to use the skin and render it down for turkey skin and fat then being a little heavy on the hand with the herbs is not a bad thing especially when you got a good strong mixture because then when you throw it in for soup it'll be at its peak and now we're going to be extra Generous with that, get it down off the side. It's okay if it goes in the side of the pan too. All that's going to do is have it so that the flavor keeps mixing in. There we go. Now, to make sure it's even, 
or to at least make sure it gets in. And then you can sprinkle more if you have to. You want to dab with the pastry brush. Now that's going to lift up a lot of it, so you don't want to use too much, and you want to keep it in localized areas, especially if you're having a mixing issue. Now to get the wings properly covered, you want to stretch them out a little bit, shake gently, pull them back if you have to, and if you get it to be a little bit too much, then just tap it off, shake it off, and it'll go back down to the bottom, and you can try again with the brush if you need to. The brush is a little bit less clean of a technique, we show you what happens here with the brush side, but it will make sure that it gets into the smaller portion. Now, since we've got this complete, it's time to fold the bird wings up under. And now I learned this because you don't want the wing tips to burn. The wing tips will burn if they're left out all by their lonesome. But if you put them in there, they'll have a lot better of a chance. And so what we'll do for just a moment here is we're going to lift up the bird by the neck cavity. Because what we have to do is get that front of the breast covered. And once it is, We'll put it back down, and we can get this bird going on into the oven. And then we'll sprinkle a little salt on after we get this mixture done around. And now one of the important things is when you put the bird in, you put it with the back towards the rear of the oven, if you can. Otherwise, you're going to have to twist it around to make sure that both sides get cooked evenly. And so since it's on its side, we're going to do that. The first timer is going to be for 10 minutes, and that's going to be at 425, so we'll set that. After 10 minutes, we're going to come back, flip it around 180 degrees, and cook it for another 10 minutes, after which we will lower the temperature to 260 degrees. And that will be for 90 minutes on one side, 90 minutes on the other. After that, we'll take it back up to 375 to finish it off for about 20 minutes so that all the juices can get nice and cooked inside, make sure it's good and ready to serve, and the skin will become nice and crisp with that final bit of hardening from the render and the last high temperature. Now we'll come back, and it'll be about a little over 9 minutes. We'll flip this around 180 degrees and take it on the way. Here we are. We've got the 10 minute mark. We're going to take the bird. Rotate it right around. And then give it another 10 minutes before we bring it back down to low. And now we've come back. We are at the last minute. We're going to open it up. And while the skin is still mildly pliable, we're going to sneak those wing tips out from underneath because those will be lovely when they're not burned. And we're going to take it and turn it just a little bit so that we can reach the other. Poke it right on out. And now the side won't get punctured and the wing won't get burned. So now we lower it down to 260 degrees. And we're going to do that for 90 minutes. And now we've come back. 90 minutes has passed. 260 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to rotate the bird around. Now it may be that the bird begins to lean. You can correct that if you wish. It doesn't affect the cooking too much. And then we're going to put that back in for another 90 minutes, 260 degrees, as it slow roasts itself into turkey loveliness. And here we are everyone, now at the final 18 minutes of the slow cook. This turkey was a little bit lighter. So with this, we're going to take it and gently get it flipped over so that it can have its last bit of time on the back 
towards the bottom. So that way the breast bits will have just enough to get good and brown. Now you're going to want to have an oven mitt. At 260 degrees, it's not the hottest thing you've ever seen, but it does get there. So once you've got that there, go ahead and gently situate it so that it's right where you need it to be. There we go. And now the last bit is to turn up the heat to 350 and give it that last 15 minutes. Alright, we are back here, and I'm going to point out something to you. You see here, this bottom, that's the important indicator on whether stuff is burnt or not. And so, in the last 10 minutes, you need to check there. Because if it starts to smell a little bit too toasty, then you want to turn the oven off and let it do the carryover cooking inside. This is just about at the point, and it's got 9 minutes left. So we're going to close it up. Turn off the oven and let the carryover cooking finish for the next nine minutes, after which we'll take it out and show you the final product. Okay, everybody, here we are. Timer is just two minutes away. We got the oven off and it's sitting in there nice and juicy licious. And now, what we're going to do is take it out and let it sit a while. Make sure it's not too stuck to the bottom, and then, once it's cool, we're going to have all kinds of fun. One, you can eat it, but two, you can peel the skin off and render it for some amazing turkey skin, which we'll get to. But this, everybody, is how you slow cook and roast a turkey so that it is juicy delicious whenever you should decide to enjoy it. Do it yourself, gourmet. Thanks for watching. Much love to you all. Stay safe, and we'll see you next time.